Steve here. Off-road grind and Bentley Custom off-road and today we are going to be working on a third gen 4Runner. We're going to be replacing this awesome rear bumper. <laughs> Let's take a closer look at that. Okay, so this third gen rear bumper here is kind of falling apart. It's <laughs> dropping rust in my driveway and we're going to take this thing off and <laughs> <laughs> take this thing off and build a new bumper for it. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be exciting. It's going to look great. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it's going to work. <laughs> There's a lot of rust up in there. Um, Donovan said this comes, this came from Maryland initially, but we're going to jazz this machine up and get it looking awesome. Stay tuned. <laughs> Bit of effort getting that old bumper up. There's some good amount of rust in here, so the, I'm pretty sure we're gonna be able to get some good solid mounts of the rear bumper brackets into here. Thinking I'll, I'll put the inside of the bracket on the or the vertical part of the bracket on the inside of the frame. So we've got this body mount here on the outside. Have something come in, go the length of that. There's a number of holes down through there. These, I think the two holes on the inside here that were holding the, the hitch on before, they are so rusted out. So I'm probably just gonna drill those out and super accessible. So I'm just gonna pop some nuts on the inside there. And same thing for the back one, that little strip of metal, you can see that part of the forward hole. So I'll probably do those three. Same thing on this side here. And yeah, the side of the bumper is gonna come down level with the bottom of the body panel there. Kinda flat here, angle down. We don't have that cross brace here, so we'll be able to get some good angle across the back. Keep the clearance high. And same thing for the side here. Come down and then cut in. So actually, thinking about that, I'm gonna get rid of that bracket. I don't need it. Anyways, that's the plan so far. Here we go. This was not coming out. I tried to drill it out from the bottom. I tried to cut it out from the back of the frame. Was not able to get that, so I just cut the whole darn thing out and welded in a new plate with some nuts on the back and they're just gonna put some new bolts up through there because that's trash. And uh, now we can finally start building the bumper. So this is, what I'm gonna work on here first is the brackets for the, they're gonna go on the side of the, the frame here. So they're gonna go in here. That's still warm. They're gonna go along here and then come out and that's gonna support the, the, the base of the bumper, I guess, or the, the top of the bumper. I'm gonna do two of those, one on each side, obviously. And then the bottom plate, which is gonna go in under here and bolt up to the holes and up to the fourth hole there. And that's also gonna create the support for the side wings as well. Here's the brackets that I've got in place here. So I'm gonna have this just down out from the body of the vehicle. So this inside bracket on the passenger side Here's the driver's side. And I am planning on putting a two by two square tubing um, spanning the two braces here, or spanning the two brackets in order to brace up the, the hitch that's gonna go there. But I'm gonna have the top plate, which I'm just about to cut now, go across the two supports here and then start tacking that into place. So I just tack this in a few spots for now. Get some bolts, make sure they're all lined up properly. And then this will be the the bottom part of the wing and then we'll start to angle this up here. 
to here and then that'll go up to the side there. I think that's gonna look good. And back plate here and then coming up to the bumper and just sit under there and I'll check to make sure that's gonna be low enough. Looking for about a half an inch gap um, below the door. I'm a little bit over that now and we'll put a 3 16th inch steel plate on there and that'll tuck that up nicely. I brought this out enough so that we have enough room for the hinge spindle. It's going to go here. Okay, this piece is cut. It's all sliding there. Pretty pretty close. I don't think I want that up any higher, so next step is to cut out this little wing. Probably I always think about half an inch. So I'll uh, account for some flex. We can't make this any higher. It would be nice to get that a little higher there, but we get the door. So that's the, the height I want right there. So that's good. Okay, this is kind of the boring part, but kind of not. Just maybe it's tedious. Not boring, but tedious, that's probably right. Anyways, what I'm doing here is just bolted in these um, bolts, <laughs> tightened in the bolts for this bottom panel here. And I've got this hanger up here for the muffler uh, exhaust, I guess exhaust tip. And so now I'm just cutting out the things, uh, all the little panels, it's got an old iMac computer box here, hence the colors. And both of these are my second um, sizing attempts. I, I cut what I think is going to be the right size and then I adjust it a little bit. So even here I've got add an inch onto here because for whatever reason I made it the wrong size. And so I want to add an inch to the entire back side here. And then I'm going to change a little bit of that angle. And now I'm working on the very back part here about I want that to look. So I've got this inch and three quarter panel across the top and I'm going to have a, a longer, wider angled part here to the very back. But I'm trying to figure out how to adjust this angle here to make it all kind of flow. but still give me enough support under here for this hinged spindle that's going to drop down. And we're going to need to have a little back on here underneath the post and then tie that into the actual side panel here as well. And now that I'm looking at it, I think this angle here needs to come up a little bit more. So I'm gonna have to figure out what distance I want that to be. So just to show you how I do that, it's just really, okay, what is it? Two inches? Okay, so I'm just gonna add two inches to the, the top there and then angle it down because I like the, the bottom position. I just want another two inches up there. So I'll fit that in maybe, maybe two and a half bring it right to the bottom of that fender thing there. We're always going to be about a half an inch below, so I've tried to get that going on here across the top part. And as I'm starting to weld and cut things, I always want to make sure I get that really dialed in because that can mess things up. Cardboard sags a little bit, steel does not. So I think, yeah, two and a half inches there, maybe two and a quarter. I'll go two and, no, I'll go two and a half. For that and an inch there, um, may or may not redo this one, that little panel, but I'm certainly going to have the marks on there. And I'll do one side first. So I'm going to cut the steel for this. And then once that's done, I can always take that steel, flip it and try and put it into, fit it all into the other side um, before I start tacking it into this side, obviously. And if that seems to work, then I'll just cut it out of some steel as well. Typically it's the same on either side, but that's the process, a little bit of a procedure, but and seeing it all to come together here is, is kind of cool. So I haven't tacked anything else in other than these brackets, um, just three little tack welds and to keep them at 90 degrees. I'm not really adding a lot of weight on right now, so it shouldn't be a problem. And yeah, other than that, everything's looking pretty 
pretty consistent and smooth and um, coming together nicely. Okay, I'm happy with how that's coming together. Obviously, adjust it a little bit once we get dialed in with uh, steel, but here's basically the angles I'm looking for. I'm gonna have a solid sheet of steel that's gonna be going all the way across and duplicate this on the other side. And then that angled piece, it's gonna go from here all the way over to the other side as well. Oh, gonna go from here all the way over to the other side as well. Um, similar position, little angled up piece here. Um, I did have it a little farther out, but I didn't want a really sharp point here, so I'll have a little bit, I'll round this out as well later, but yeah, I like the way that's all coming together. I like the angles, looking good. Um, I'm done for the day. Getting to this point and figuring out all this was the hardest part, really. The brackets, getting that dialed in, the holes, and I'm getting these angles cut. Um, I should get this pretty much done tomorrow, I would think. Intact together at least. And then I can start working on the swing outs. Um, always takes me longer than I think it's going to, so it'll probably take me all day to do it, but i um, pretty happy with where we're at. So, here we go. Bit of a dreary day. We've got pouring rain, so back the truck up into the garage. And i take you on a quick tour of how we're doing so far. And Right now I've got the back bumper portion pretty much complete. Welded in the hitch receiver and starting to work on the side wings here. So what I'm trying to do is create some clearance. Obviously we want to have at least half an inch and on the sides here I want to have a little bit more and especially as you, I'll show you on the other side there's the, um, I don't know what it's called, kind of like a baffle of some sort. On my fourth gen, it's on both sides, but on the third gen, it's just on the driver's side. And it's gonna have to take that side wing a little bit farther out. So again, just going to my cardboard aided design here and making sure I've got all this set up properly. Once I start getting this bottom piece in, that's pretty well set, it's four big tacks in there. And now I can put this in and, and maintain that half inch gap that I want at the top. So as I'm going along though, I like to do one side over the, uh, along with the other. And this is a really handy tool here, this little angle um, finder. Yeah, I've got a digital angle finder that I can put up to see if things are level and you know what the actual angle, but I don't know what this is, maybe a digital protractor or something. And so what I've done on the other side is take that angle from the bottom with this, and I guess it's, oh, where is it? But that's about 60 degrees or 130. And recreate that over on this side. And go, okay, great. I've got the right angle, so it's gonna look the same from behind. So that's good. So that's a kind of neat tool. And they just put some little clamps up here with some metal to hold this flush up against the, the piece that I'm working on. And that looks good. And it looks like I'm gonna have a nice clearance coming up here for the, the side panel here as well. So once I've got these two in, then I can put the top piece on and there's a few pieces in here. On the other side, obviously I need to drill the spindle hole for the hinge. And on this side, I'm gonna put a latch on here somehow. And then what I'm thinking of doing for these corner posts here, because I've got a nice rounded corner, is just taking a piece of metal or steel and putting a couple score lines on the inside and then just sort of bending it a little bit around the corner so it meets up with this side panel. But these smaller pieces, I always do them last because I want the big pieces to dictate the majority of the, the planes that we're working with here. Okay, well. Pretty excited that we got to this point. Always seems to take longer than I think it's going to. However, the bumper component is actually done now. So we've got the hole for the swing out, spindle hinge dialed in. Um, but we got this all done. So this is looking good. Um, I'm liking the way all the gaps are in terms of paneling. And obviously everything's just tack welded together right now but I'll put that into a little bit more um, 
obviously welding later once I pull this off. But a couple of quick little things I'm gonna fix up. Maybe just reduce this line here a little bit more and maybe pop, I'm trying to think about the hitch, maybe putting up some wings here on either side in a hole for a chain if he wants to tow something. And other than that, everything is dialed in. Um, it's got some sanding to do, but I'm going to wait till I finish welding everything. And then um, build out that swing out. So swing out's going in here. There's, here's the hinge area. And it's going to be one big long swing out. So I'm probably going to angle the arm a little bit and then bring it out along here. So we've got some clearance from the back door. I didn't want to make this bumper any any farther back than it is so I figured I would make the swing out a little bit farther back to keep the departure angle for the, the bumper as tight to the body as I could and then we're gonna have this one big swing out so we're gonna have a, a latch over here obviously outside the door so it doesn't cause an issue and then the, the cylinder for the hinge is gonna be just inside there outside the door there as well so anyways there it is, looking good so far. I'm pretty happy with how that's come together. Um, we should be able to get that swing out knocked out tomorrow. I don't have to do anything new. Um, this is a new design that I got to put together, so a lot of measuring and uh, figuring things out with cardboard, but yeah, this is all set now. Okay, we're about to start working on the swing arm. And we've got the spindle in place, just trying to decide how high I want that. And on the side, we'll put the stop and the latch. Just locking out the swing arm here. Let's, let's get it to the right position. It's probably going to be there. There's the tire angle, something like that. We're going to put in some support angles down in here on either side, 45 degrees, just to make sure that all gets put into place. Um, I think we've got about 15 inch stem here, 110 degree angle up there. And then I think it's eight, eight and a half inches inside to get to the backing plate there and just weld it in some lugs. So I'll put these supports in, um, weld everything up, then make the frame for the, actually I'll make the fuel carrier first. And they make the frame. And here's the tire, tire carrier, duh. Here is, <laughs> that's the tire carrier. This is the fuel carrier. And I've put this all together now. What I've done, it's probably easier to see from the backside. I put these little tabs on the ends and the bottom or the back and the, the bottom of the side panels here and just bent them, put a score line in it, bent it over, actually, um, bent it in the vise and just hammered it. I actually started to bend it a little bit in the bender and then just finished it off with the hammer and the vise. And same thing here for the actual body of the fuel carrier. So just scored this line, bent it in the bender. Um, it's a little bowed up at the top, but I'm okay with that. I can always pop that down a bit when I'm finished. So what I'm gonna do now is weld in these corners or the edges, edges, corners, I guess, I'm not sure. Um, down here and here on the bottom and then in the tabs on the back let's see. There we go with the tabs on the back and the, there's the same on the bottom and Once that's done just sand it down a little bit and then take all these clamps off reposition them and pull the front in and The top down a little bit and then put some welds up on the edges here Maybe should have uh, put a tab on the inside here, but this will work that's what I'm used to doing. So this is actually a much cleaner um, joint than, uh, than I normally get on this. So anyways, so that's good. Then I'm gonna make a bit of a divider in the middle here. And then I'll, I'll later I'm gonna do the, um, the lock that holds the canisters down and it's able to lock them up. So anyways, we can do a little bit of welding and then I'm going to take that two by two tubing and build the frame for the carrier and then bolt, um, drill and then bolt that in. So we're on the fuel carrier frame. So we've got the top here clamping the tubing into the swing arm so that I'm making sure it's as flush as possible so it's not hanging over on either side. 
I'm going to measure this as well, make sure it's square um, diagonally. But get the little magnets here just to make sure this is as vertical as possible in relation to the swing arm. And as you can see, just sort of beveled the edges here in order to get a better weld in. So it's going to set these in, tack weld them into place, and then once that's all done, my fuel carrier here is complete. And this is about 19 inches high, 14 and 1 8 inch wide um, fuel containers fit in there nicely. So lots of room. Might even be room for some of those water containers that are a little, a little wider. And the one I made initially is just a little too tight to get that water container in. But Anyway, so that's lots of room in there, and we've got a little divider in the middle. You just have one can. And then I'm going to put the lock tab on the top of the this guy here. And then I always like to mess around with different designs for the cover to come down and cover off the, the spout so somebody can't either siphon fuel out of your can or take it. So anyways, working on this, and pretty straightforward, so... I will be back when this is done. And the fuel carrier is now done. Um, put this fiberglass blanket on top of the truck to stop any sparks from the welding melting into the glass. That's nasty. Anyway, so we've got this all done. Um, what I did is use this little level here. Make sure that whatever level the swing arm was at is the same as what we had on there and just clamped it all together and welded it up so that's good sanded these little um, welds down at the top because I want to clamp the fuel carrier right to that frame and drill the holes probably two or three on each side probably three and uh, bolt that in temporarily for now and then um, and go back in finally when it's all painted up. So anyways, it's the next step. Hey, doing really well here with the bumper. We've got the swing arm all done. Fuel carrier is done. The only thing I need to do now is just weld in a little tab at the top for a lock that also puts the cover down over the jerry can. So that's all ready to roll. And then we've got the pin, stop pinned here. Nice big, it's because it's a big, single swing arm I wanted to put a big pin in here and um, I just welded this hole this guy here so I've just put a lot of the welds into the um, supports here so this sucker is smoking hot so I can't really touch it to pull it open so anyways um, there's the pin location so this is gonna close it and lock it closed and then the open here for this one here for um, being able to open the door so that it clears the tire. And then this last one is just to stop it from swimming back closed, but it's going to close it um, before or stop it before the tire hits the tail light there. One thing I noticed the other day is this here, and it's the same on both sides. This is just kind of angled down a little bit. I like the angle here. This is a little higher by a couple of millimeters, like an eighth of an inch or so on the left hand side on the driver's side, our passenger side, and on the right-hand side, same thing here on the driver's side. So I'm gonna cut the top of this because I don't like how that's not, not even. So I'm gonna just slice the top of that sucker there and then drop that plate down a bit. But other than that, we're ready to start welding things in. Um, I'm trying to decide whether I want to weld the D-shackles in when it's on the truck um, or just wait until I get it off. I think I'm going to do it now so that I can see the angle and, and such. Although I guess I could probably do that just as easily. Um, and you know what, I'm going to wait because then I can flip the bumper upside down and it'll be a little easier to put those mounts on the bumper as I'm welding them in. So anyways, coming along really well. I like it. It looks good. Next stage really is just pulling the sucker off. A couple final adjustments. Uh, shackles the chain link for the hitch and then start welding all the seams sand them down 
and uh, start to primer it and it's ready to roll. So a couple little tiny things um, that we are looking good, enjoying the program here so far. Right on, I did not weld the bumper to the frame, it has come off the truck. So this is awesome. And I started welding some of the outside little stitches for the most part. And then I thought I'm not gonna do everything. Obviously, don't wanna do all the welding on the outside. And now I'm gonna get into the inside, stitch up some more, pull back in on the inside a bit because the welding does tend to change the tension of the steel. And there's that two by two that I put in there to weld into the hitch. And yeah, I am done for the day, but I am gonna fix this up. So I already adjusted the top of that wing. I need to cut this one down. I thought it'd be a lot easier if I'd had it off the truck thing. So I'll take about an inch, an eighth of an inch off this edge here and drop that down a bit. But pretty happy with how everything's looking so far. And I think it's gonna be good. So I will get at this tomorrow, finish welding. Um, I can do that in the morning without bugging any of my neighbors. <laughs> when it gets a little later in the morning, I can start to do some sanding, but I should be able to get this done tomorrow for the most part. And I'm kind of wondering if I should cut an angle from here down to this corner. I think I might. No reason to have that excess steel there. Cool. There we go. So I am probably pretty dirty. Um, this is coming along really nicely and looking forward to getting it done. Have a great day. Bye. Well, this sucks. This is not gonna work. I'm gonna put these little chain brackets in here and I think they're way too far back. No, I'm just gonna put them up to here and angle them back these <laughs> holes. I don't think anybody's ever gonna get a chain in there. So I'm going to move them up, even make them a little bit more square and put the circle a little farther forward, circle the hole. Anyways, I just cut these off, so pull those off. And make some new ones and re-weld them in. <laughs> makes the, uh, the chef pulls them in nice. Almost done. Okay, I was just about to get working on fitting this onto the truck, and then I realized I've got these little strips those inside nuts. Here's the old one. Here's the one I made. And this has got to go inside the frame. Up in here. To be able to give the forward bolts something to purchase or grip into. But then I realized I don't want to have a hole in the back of the bumper to be able to access this strip to move it around. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to get my welder nozzle up in there to weld these into position. So what I figure I'm gonna do is just cut a little hole, a little access panel, I guess, just enough to get my fingers in there. So I'm gonna cut it on each side, just near the end of the, so that it matches up with this little opening here on the side of the frame on the inside. And, then I can reach up inside once I've got the bumper into place and through that side panel, grab the sucker, wiggle it around into position and as I do those bolts up into, a, into um, tightening the bumper up. So <clears throat> I think I've got the position figured out. This is about four inches forward of the back edge here, which fits down with the leading edge of the bumper down here. Let's see if you can see that right there. So I think that's gonna work. Anyways, so I'll do that and then um, uh, cut those. Then I think this is ready to test it into place and I should be able to start painting it or priming it this afternoon. The um, humidity is supposed to drop. It was like 100% this morning. It's supposed to go down to 40 by noon. So 
We'll get on that this afternoon. Ready to start to coat the bumper. So as a final fit and before we start sanding everything down finally. Um, this tubing rests up so fast. So sand that down with the Scotch Bright uh, grinder pad. <clears throat> I think I've got everything done that I want to. I'll take the fuel carrier off and um, paint that up separately. But yeah, I think I've got everything. Got the angles here leveled out. So that's good. I don't have it completely bolted up underneath, so it'll snug up a little bit more than it is. But I like the way it looks. Everything's come together pretty nicely. Angled the bottom here. Uh, cut it from there down to the corner of the, the bumper. And yeah, I think we're good. Just making sure I haven't forgotten everything or anything, but it's looking, it's gonna come together pretty nicely. And this exhaust, I'll just go up inside a hanger, up inside that little hole there. So, I'm ready to go. Here we go. We are all done. A couple spray coats of semi-gloss black rust-oleum enamel over top of a spray and brush coat of the primer that they have. It's called Rusty Metal. I just like it because it's brown and it shows me where I haven't hit paint on it yet. And it's great for a base. So anyways, we're all done here. I'm just gonna let this cure for a day or two, for three, and uh, then we're gonna get this installed on that thing, on that machine there. Can't wait. And another Bentley Custom Off-Road bumper build. This one a 3 16th inch plate bumper for a third gen 4Runner with a single swing out with a fuel carrier and a tire carrier on it. So I love how this all came together. Super low profile. Follows the nice lines of the third gen, which is great. Got that low bumper that we replaced. So big difference from the previous bumper that was on here. And I like how everything came together. Fuel carrier is nice and crisp. That looks sweet. Really like the lines on that. A little lock and cover on here that nice and solid. Good tar carrier. I totally forgot to paint the cap earlier for the spindle, so that is drying over in the garage. <laughs> so I'll pop that on tomorrow when Donovan comes to pick up his truck. But yeah, I really like how this came together. Super solid. So we got a nice big pin stop here because of the long swing arm. All greased up. Ready to rock and roll. And so we've got positions here for, I can't open it up completely because it'll smash into my truck. But this one, the far pin stop will stop the tire from coming into the tail light. And this is open now for the tire on here to clear the door by about an inch and a half or so. And then this stop here for the closed position but really liking how it's looking. And um, I think he's gonna really like how it's changed the look of his truck. So enjoy the video and uh, yeah, stay away from me the little red wasp. Okay, have a great day. Talk to you soon. Hey, Bentley Custom Off-Road. This is Donovan. We just finished making this third gen 4Runner rear bumper uh, with a big swing out with tire carrier and uh, fuel carrier. Donovan, what do you think of your bumper here? This thing blows my mind. I love it. It is amazing. Uh, Steven was very, uh, very communicative throughout the entire process. We constantly exchange texts and he will speak with you and make sure you move everything along the way. And it's, it's going to be a great build process because he loops you in through the entire thing. So you will not, you will always be aware of what he's doing. Awesome, man. Yeah. Thanks so much. It was awesome dealing with you. Sweet. <laughs>